For more on those discussions, I am joined here in studio by Florida Republican Congressman and member of the House Armed Services and Judiciary Committees, Matt Gates. Welcome, Congressman. Great to have you. Good to be with you. So is it worth it all going 15 rounds to elect a speaker? Absolutely. We got concessions that really were being rejected as early as Monday when it comes to being able to read legislation 72 hours before its adoption, individual appropriations bills, mm -hmm. and ultimately what we negotiated ensures that we will never again have a circumstance like this omnibus spending legislation because bills will have to comport to a single subject. There will be germanity requirements on amendments. And so it's going to be an open process, a transparent process. I'm thrilled at where the House of Representatives is today. You were quoted as saying the construct of these rules concessions functionally turn the speakership into a ceremonial position. Do you mean that? Well, Speaker McCarthy is our speaker and long live the speaker. I look forward to working closely with him. But he did agree to his great credit to democratize power to the membership. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, these committees that decide what bills come to the floor, what the spending paradigm is, they're controlled just by people loyal to the speaker. Now what we have is a real representation of all of the different viewpoints within our conference on the Rules Committee, on the Appropriations Committee. We fought hard to get agreements to have conservatives on those committees, to have our budget hawks on appropriations, and I can't wait to see what we're able to do when we unlock the potential of all of our members going forward. What about the concern that this delayed process weakened him? And to recap, we've got a Democrat in the White House, we've got Democrats running the United States Senate. Don't you need to him, him to be as strong as possible? Well, I think the way to have a strong Republican position on a lot of these issues is to have strong Republicans on the most relevant committees. Mm -hmm. And I don't really get the critique that taking from Tuesday to Friday to work this out puts the Republican majority in peril. I mean, you know, Mike, that in the summer, the entire Congress takes like six weeks off mm -hmm. where we're not even around at all. So to take four days to figure out who's going to be second in line to the presidency and to ensure that we have a House of Representatives that is a fighting force going to check the Biden administration, absolutely worth it. Up next is the rules package, the governing rules for the next two years in the House of Representatives. Any drama there? I don't expect it. I think this is an exquisite rules package. And, you know, members of Congress, even speakers, we pass through these positions and move on to other things. But oftentimes, when you make the rules better, you can actually improve the health of the institution long term. Some of these rules will allow us to zero in on specific elements of federal spending and force votes on whether or not that is an appropriate use of tax dollars. Also baked into these rules, we're going to vote on a church-style commission to evaluate the weaponization of this government against our people. That's the FBI, the DOJ, but even other entities that we see abusing their power to the detriment of the liberty of our citizens. This is going to give us more staff, more resources, and we're going to get government back on the side of the American people. There was a tense moment late night Friday night when Congressman Mike Rogers, expected to be the next chairman of House Armed Services, confronted you. You guys both serve on the Armed Services Committee. What was that all about, and are you guys going to be able to work together on armed services? Well, Mike Rogers is going to be a terrific chairman of the Armed Services Committee, and we share a deep commitment to our national defense, to our men and women in uniform. And, of course, in a late-night moment of high drama, people can have moments of frustration. But Mike Rogers and I have a six-year productive uh, working relationship. We're going to work together wonderfully going forward, and I don't think there should be any punishment or reprisal just because he had an animated moment moment. He has my forgiveness and uh, certainly is someone who's done great things for our national defense and will continue to do those great things. You've taken some praise from people who like the fight that you led this week. Uh, you've also taken some criticism. Some people saying this is about fundraising, this is about more media appearances. Do you consider yourself a serious legislator? Well, absolutely. I mean, one of the reasons we fought for these rules was to ensure that all members of Congress can get involved in the legislative process at a more granular level. For far too many years, under both Republican and Democrat control, power has been centralized in a select few, and that's not 
good for the republic. Uh, I am not one that's really dearth for a lot of media appearances. I think I'm someone who appears on your network and others more than any other member of Congress. So it's an odd criticism to say that I'm doing this for media hits when I do a lot of those anyway. And even before this episode, I was one of the top fundraisers in Congress, despite the fact that I'm one of the only Republicans in Congress who doesn't accept any lobbyist money or any political action committee donations, because I believe our politics is most pure when it is funded by the people of our country, not those who are paid to try to influence outcomes. Congressman Mac Gates of the great state of Florida, great to have you, and we'll be tracking the 118th Congress starting tomorrow. Can't wait. Thanks so much. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.